The Pythagorean theorem is probably one of the most famous theorems in general, and in particular in mathematics. Despite the fact that it is named Pythagorean, it was known for a thousand years before the life of this philosopher. The Pythagorean theorem reads as follows. If we have a right triangle with legs A, B in hypotenuse C, then the sum of the squares of the legs is equal to the square of the hypotenuse. That is, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. But we know that A squared value describes the area of A square with side A. That is, if we build on this leg A square, build a square on this leg, and build a square on the hypotenuse, then we get that the area of this square, a square, plus the area of this square, b square, is equal to the area of this square, c square. This is the so-called geometric explanation of the Pythagorean theorem. The sum of the areas of the squares built on the legs is equal to the area of the square built on the hypotenuse. If you build not squares, but any similar figures, let's say semicircles, then the sum of these areas will still be equal to the area of figure built on the hypotenuse. At the moment, there are more than 200 different proofs of the Pythagorean theorem. Let's use one of them. To prove the Pythagorean theorem, we consider right triangle with legs A and B and hypotenuse C. Now we finish building this right angle triangle to a square as follows. We continue the leg with A length, to a distance b, and now we draw a perpendicular to this point at a distance a. We got the same triangle, but inverted. Similarly, we finish building from this side and from this side. We will get four identical triangles. Here is leg a, here is b, this is leg a, this is b, this is leg a, this is b. So we got a square with side a plus b. We know that the area of a square with side A plus B is the square of its side, that is, A plus B squared. But on the other hand, this square consists of four triangles, identical, four triangles. Let me remind you that these are right triangles. The area of a right triangle is the product of its legs, that is, four triangles with area one-half AB and plus the area of this square with side C, because it will be C. By the way, it is easy to make sure that this is really a square. Firstly, all sides are equal, so it's rhombus. If we prove that one angle is a right angle, then all the other angles will be right. How can we prove that an angle is a right angle? We know that this angle plus this angle equals 90 degrees, but these triangles are equal, so this angle is equal to this angle. That is, the sum of these two angles is 90 degrees, which means that this angle is still 90 degrees, so it's really a square. We got the following expression. We should expand the formula for the square of the sum, and then we get a squared plus b squared plus a double product of 2ab. This equals 4 multiplied by 1 half, that is 2ab plus c squared. By reducing 2ab, we get a squared plus b squared equals c squared. That is, we have proved the Pythagorean theorem. Let's take a look at one example. Let's say we have a right triangle with legs 3 and 4 and we need to find its hypotenuse. Let's mark the hypotenuse as C and use the Pythagorean theorem, the sum of the squares of the legs. So 3 squared plus 4 squared equals the square of the hypotenuse, which is C squared. Let's consider it. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, in total 25. That is, the square of the hypotenuse is 25. What number squared gives us 25? It's 5, as we used to know. So the hypotenuse is 5. A right triangle with sides 3, 4 and 5 is called the Egyptian triangle. Let's take a look at another example. Let's say we have a right triangle again. This time we know the hypotenuse, 13, and we know one leg. Let's say 12. It is required to find another leg. Let's mark it as A and use the Pythagorean theorem again. 12 squared plus A squared equals 13 squared. 12 squared is 144. 
we leave a squared as it is, and 13 squared is 169. So what is a squared? That would be 169 minus 144. We get 25. A squared equals 25, so a equals 5. Thus the second leg is equal to 5. Note that sides here and here turned out to be integers. Such numbers that satisfy the Pythagorean theorem are called Pythagorean triples. Now let's take a look at another example. Let's say we have an isosceles trapezoid. Let the upper base be 4, side 10, and the lower base is 20. We need to find the area of this trapezoid. How can we find the area? We used to proceed in such tasks as follows. Let's mark the letters A, B, C, D. We should drop the perpendicular from B and C to the side A, D. That is, I drop the perpendicular from point B, let's mark it E. We do the same thing from the C. Let's name this perpendicular K. Let's consider the quadrangle BCKE. This quadrangle is a rectangle. These sides and these sides are parallel. And here is the angle of 90 degrees. So it's really a rectangle. If it is a rectangle, then opposite sides are equal. BC is 4, so EK will also be 4. Since this trapezoid is equilateral, the left and right triangles will be equal to each other, because they have the same legs and the same hypotenuses. By the equitability criterion of right triangles, they are equal. This means that the segments KD and AE are also equal to each other. AD is 20, EK is 4. So these two segments are 20 minus 4, 16. So each of them is 8. Now we should consider one of the triangles, for example, A, B, E. It is rectangular and the hypotenuse is equal to 10. One of the legs is equal to 8. We can use the Pythagorean theorem to find B, E. According to the Pythagorean theorem, the sum of the squares of the legs, that is, B, E squared plus A, E squared. And we have 8 squared equals A, B squared, that is 10 squared. It remains to be calculated. 10 squared is 100, 8 squared is 64, 100 minus 64 is 36. So BE squared is 36. That means that BE is equal to 6. Thus we have found the height of the trapezoid. Now we can find the area very easily. We know the area of the trapezoid, it is half the sum of the base, that is 4 plus 20 in half, and we multiply it by the height of the trapezoid, by 6. We have 24 divided by 2 here, and we get 12. Then we multiply 12 by 6, and we get 72. So the area of a trapezoid is 72. This video lesson is over.